No doubt many of you coming to this video tutorial will have followed along with our quick start tutorial. That video gives a complete rundown on the process for downloading, installing and connecting to the evaluation platform with our transceiver evaluation software, or TES for short. However, as many of us are well aware, sometimes with software it doesn't just work. For those that found difficulties or errors when attempting to connect to the evaluation board with our transceiver evaluation software, we've put together this video on the most common issues we've encountered and ways to begin debug. If we still can't answer your questions here, I'll direct you to our Engineer Zone forum, where you can read through previous questions on the topic and even post your own question if your issue is unique. I'm Oshin Watkins, and you're very welcome to this video guide from Analog Devices. Luckily from a debug perspective, there are only three main areas where an issue can manifest itself. On the host computer, on the evaluation platform, or on the evaluation board. We'll tackle issues that can present in each of these areas one by one, highlighting the steps that you can take to fix the issue on your own setup. Let's begin by reviewing each error that can manifest on the host computer. Most issues surrounding host computer connection relate to one of four things. Network configuration, firewalls, software bugs, or hardware issues. Our software expects that the Ethernet address of the host computer is set to 192.168.1.2. Setting the host computer's Ethernet connection can be done via the Control Panel Network and Sharing Center. In order to see your connection to the FPGA, you'll need to have the FPGA powered on and connected to the computer's Ethernet port. Once visible, you will then be able to configure the connection as specified in the user guide. Given that our software was developed in-house, many firewalls do not inherently trust it. If connection issues persist after confirming that the Ethernet port has been configured as specified, enter the Settings menu and search for Firewall Settings. If you are using a third-party firewall, for example McAfee Security, navigate to the settings for that firewall in whichever application controls it. How best to allow our application through the firewall will be determined by your operating system and your system administrator so it will be up to you to find the best way of granting permission to TES to get through the firewall. TES also stores information about bugs, errors and warnings that occur during normal operation. This information is kept in log files stored under C, Users, Username, App Data, Local, Temp, Argo, Logs. On a few occasions it has been seen that error messages can get stuck in these error logs leading the TES to believe that there is an issue with the connection even when there is nothing wrong. In the event that TES simply does not connect to the platform even when everything appears to be operational and configured correctly, a full uninstall and re-download of TES is often the best route to take. This should completely clear out the log files and thereby remove any error message reported in ER. Lastly, if there is any issue with the hardware involved in the setup, TES is likely to throw a warning or an error. There is nothing that can be changed in TES to make it ignore issues with the hardware, so let us now focus on detecting and debugging hardware issues in the evaluation setup. Naturally, the best place to begin is by ensuring that the evaluation board is connected to the platform via the correct FMC connector, and that all jumpers and switches on the FPGA are configured as specified in the user guide. Also ensuring that a solid Ethernet connection is being made on the FPGA is another good step to take. All over the FPGA and the valuation board are green and red LEDs, which we use to indicate the status of various blocks in the system. Most issues encountered on the evaluation setup will be flagged by one or more LEDs not behaving as they should. Begin by inspecting the four LEDs just next to the SD card slot on the FPGA here. In the user guide, we detail the exact behavior that should be seen with the current version of SD card image. If the behavior detail there is not being seen on the FPGA, there is likely an issue with the SD card image. More details on issues with SD card imaging can be found on our product forums, but if the LEDs shown here do not behave as expected, we'll know to look at the SD card image next. It has been seen that the SD card Linux image will fail to boot at random. We have not sourced any single issue for this random occurrence, however it's usually the case that a simple reboot will solve this issue. This problem will usually manifest itself as either the LEDs on the FPGA and evaluation board not behaving as expected, or with the fan on the FPGA not spinning as it should. 
It's worth mentioning that some setups need to swap the fan cable to the fan header on the evaluation board as shown here, but not every setup will require this. Another very common issue with the FPGA is the server failed to start problem. This can present in a few ways, most commonly Tez will display an error message during its attempt to connect with the platform. Usually the best approach is to log into the FPGA via putty and attempt to manually start the server. Even if it doesn't work, it will typically provide some indication as to why it failed. Log into the FPGA with the login details shown on screen now and navigate to the stated directory. Once there, run the server corresponding to the silicon revision you are using. A common error message seen from attempting to run the server is the hardware open failed message. This function call attempts to secure a connection to the ADRV9001 eval board, meaning that if the server is failing to make a connection for this reason, the fault is either with the connection to the board or with the board itself. Typically this message will be accompanied by an abnormality in eval board operation, such as a red interface voltage LED remaining on or a system OK LED remaining off. Other common issues with the eval board include the switch for the clock source being in the wrong position. If you intend to use the onboard VCTCXO, ensure the clock selector switch is set to internal, as shown here. The clock power supply LED should light up green if the onboard clock has powered up successfully. If you are using an external clock, be sure to have the switch set correctly, sufficient power in the clock signal, and the clock frequency within our operating limits. Also be aware of the power supply OK LED in the middle of the board. If this LED fails to light up, it means the ADRV9001 product power domains have not initialized correctly. This can be caused either by an issue with the device itself or with the ADP5056 device we use to control power domains. Careful debug of the ADP5056 can determine whether this device is at fault. This device can be damaged by large spikes of voltage or current which in theory can happen during a failed launch of the FPGA platform. That covers the bulk of the issues most customers encounter, although there are of course issues we've seen that have not been listed here. Issues such as SD card sizes and spec versions not being sufficient, the FPGA interface voltage being too high for our eval board, and cryptic error messages coming from our SD card imaging software when run on the Windows 7 operating system. Given that there are too many issues that occur too infrequently to list here, I'll now direct you to our Engineer Zone forums. These forums host questions of all varieties, including questions about very specific connection issues. If this video has still not answered your issue, read through our older questions, view our debug document in the Documents tab, or even post your own question in the Q&A forum if neither of these solve your problem. That concludes this video tutorial on debugging connection issues. As always, do keep an eye out for the next video to come in this series. You're more than welcome to view both the product page and the product forums for any additional info or help you may need in the meantime. Thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.